You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. That was unnecessary. Some people never can take a hint. So, what can I do for you at this late hour? If you're here for a position in my administration, I haven't one yet. (laughs) No, nothing like that. Why are you here? That's a little suspicious, Harrison. (laughs) I'm just about ready to run for the White House. I'm suspicious of everyone that comes through the door. Well, you don't have to be suspicious of me. We all know that anyone who gets in your way decides to go off and do something else with their lives. Rumors surround us all, Harrison. Do you believe all those things written about you? Are we all not accused of all things by all people? Sometimes it even suits us if the rumors are believed. Wouldn't you agree? Doesn't that depend on what the rumors say? I only came here this evening to wish you luck with the campaign. The next nine months are going to be tough. Now, that is correct. And as we near election day, it only gets harder. And are your family ready for that? I'm assuming you've discussed it with them. Nicole, the kids, how it will affect their lives. We've discussed it for a while now. And, uh, Carlton? (coughs) Myself and Carlton Hall have known each other for a long time. He had his own ambitions, we all know that. But we discussed it, and we came to the same conclusion. That, as we both stand firmly on the centre ground, if anyone had a sporting chance, it was me. That was very big of him. And he says... Remember Pittsburgh? And I have some calls to make, so uh, I'll... No one cares if you inhaled or not. I have to get on. But they will care about the drugs and prostitutes you spent the night enjoying. That is a terrible slander. It is. Unless the hotel film footage should find its way onto the nightly news. (sighs) That was over 20 years ago. We all have pasts. We do, Harrison. And I, for one, am not judging you. Thank you. Not when there are so many others who will. Democracy is expensive, don't you find? Every day we have to raise money just to stay in office. We all know that people are reluctant to pay for their public representatives. And so we make our deals. What do you want? I have been speaking to another member of your team. Oh? Who? Tommy Fielder. Have you spoken to him recently? He's been away on vacation. Tommy has a habit of working too hard, not knowing when to stop. I think he's in Vermont at the moment, skiing. I'm afraid, Harrison, you are a little misinformed about that. Really? He's just outside Brownsville. As long as he's having a good time. He's a worried man. He sounded fine last time I spoke to him, but I'll pass on your concerns to him next time we speak. I spoke to him today. Well, I hope he's having fun wherever he is and whatever he's doing. In the morning, he won't be in Texas. Oh. He's heading south. He's going to Mexico. He told you that. I mean, he spoke those very words. I believe he told you just after your speech tonight. Tommy, however, he's more of a backroom kind of guy, and I don't blame him. Not everyone is cut out for life in front of the cameras. Some people get rather frightened by them. They get nervous as to what someone might ask. I'm not sure I'm entirely following you, Terry Ann. Then let me be plain. If you must. At the meeting in Pittsburgh, you promised the labor unions, not in your speech, but later, that you intended to increase Social Security payments if you were elected. But you made no mention of where the money was going to come from. That was a private meeting. What is private for long in our business? Now, you could see how some suspicious minds might think, Harrison. Oh? Wall Street may not currently be flavor of the month, but times will change, and memories of the electorate can be rather short. Those in our banking institutions, rather longer. And we wouldn't want to upset the bomb markets, would we? (laughs) Or those dealing in derivatives. We wouldn't. You can't go around making promises... That cannot be kept. 
If I make a commitment, then it's up to me how I pay for it. Just like the new money you found for your state's health budget. Like I said, it's been... No one to this day really knows where all that extra money came from. Believe me, it has been looked for. But that deficit in your state was hardly felt. I checked in my coat pockets for loose change. And found quite a bit of it. PSK bought almost 5,000 M60s. Sold them to some very dubious individuals in Central America. The uh, FARC gorillas, I believe, were just one such group. But there were others back in 2003, the beginning of your political career. Further deals have happened since. Money into PSK and out of PSK. In effect, you have used PSK like your own private bank. Mr. Rutherford was the one who acted as your bagman, taking the cash where needed. The money from such exchanges then found its way into your campaign for Congress. You also used the same trick several times in several different countries to prop up your state's dwindling tax returns, as more and more jobs headed towards Mexico, Indonesia, and China. You could say you were a noble man using a vile business to achieve noble ends. And how is Tommy? Tommy's fine. Only now you see the problem. You mean exposure? All sorts of rumors persist of how you got into the Senate. I wonder how many of them are true. Come on, Terry Ann. Don't be shy. Tell Uncle Harrison how you ended up where you are today. The removal of state services is to force people into buying from the private sector, which is always more expensive. Your subsidizing of the state's budget, though unconventional, may have brought benefits to the people of Main Street, but threatened the profits of Wall Street, the very people who you had taken money from to fund your political career. So, you come as a messenger. Whose message are you delivering? My own. Which is? Excuse me, Congressman, Senator. But Carlton Hall is all over the wire, and we're being deluged with calls. Is this more about Nicole not turning up? No. PSK Corporation is flavor of the hour. We're getting questions about Colombia, Brazil, Nicaragua. Africa has also been mentioned. Well, Terry Ann, it would appear that someone got to me before you did. Have you heard? I've just been discussing PSK. No. Tommy Fielder is dead. What? Shot in his car. When? 30, 40 minutes ago. Why? Uh, what I meant was, was it a drive-by shooting, a, a robbery that went wrong? Suicide. I spoke to him. I, I don't believe it. And neither will anyone else. What? Have the early reports mentioned anything about his cell phone? Uh, no. Not yet. Will they? I don't know. Will they find it? No idea. If no phone is discovered, there'll be no proof that the congressman ever spoke to Tommy this evening. What about phone records? There might be evidence. There will not, however, be any reason to look. No direct reason for probable search. If you had a new phone, there'll be even less to find if the cops did. But his phone will have my old number stored in it. But not your new one. <laughs> We're already distancing ourselves from Tommy? Tommy's gone. You, we, can't bring him back. I think, Congressman, we should get you away from here. I, th I think we should go now. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Uh, not just yet. Why? We all know the questions that will be coming. Sneaking out via some side door in the dead of night. Well, that might have worked between yourself and Miss Smith here in the past. But not tonight. Not under these circumstances. I think you should go now, Mrs. Baker. Any sign of Mr. Baker? Whatever did happen to him, huh? Managed to hush that up. I wonder where we'd find him if we looked. We all know you flip sides like waffle, Senator. Democrat when it suits you. Republican when it suits your agenda. You've no loyalty to anything. Whereas, Mr. Rutherford, your loyalty is blind. What do you mean by that? A conspiracy, a criminal conspiracy, arms sales to set off taxes, to combat the IRS and the Federal Reserve. Yourself and Tommy Fielder 
on the surface. He wrote the congressman's speeches. But behind the scenes, the two of you dealt with the money, trying desperately to counter the effects of the global depression, or whatever it is they're calling it these days. Any honest intentions will very soon get lost in the media. And a criminal case is still a criminal case. And how many strikes before you'll be out for good? I told you to get rid of him. He'll bring us all down. You shouldn't even be here. Good in the sack and your daddy's money, but that's it. Shut up, the pair of you. Mr. Rutherford may, however, be right. He certainly isn't. Oh, Miss Smith. If only you knew how you had been used. I don't understand. No, I know you don't. You see, you may have thought you were just opening yourself up to the congressman and your father's business connections would provide the rest. Only, as every politician knows, once you're in someone else's pocket, you have to find a way of climbing out. You may have even dared to believe in the congressman here, but all the time he has been laying political time bombs just waiting to go off. Not sure I'm following you on that, Senator. One of the congressman's major talents has always been the generating of loyalty from those that come to know him. You two are just such examples. One for the money, one for the conspiracy. But you have both pledged yourself to someone with a very different plan. And why should we believe anything you say? Because you're a daddy's girl. And Mr. Rutherford is too old to start again. If the congressman falls, so do you both. And why would Congressman Doyle want out? Because once you've made a pact with the devil, he only lets you go when you are no longer any use to him. You haven't been taking Carlton's telephone calls recently. Every time he rings, you're busy. Always too busy to come to the phone. But Carlton was there at the beginning for you, as he was for me. Did he suggest the way to fill the funding gap? I thought he might. Although not a shareholder or even on the board, I know Carlton has friends connected to PSK, but nothing on paper that could lead back to him. And what did you promise him in return? It has to have been a way back into the political limelight. If you make it to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, you will be appointing thousands of jobs in your new administration. Which one did you promise him? Cabinet? Or even higher? VP, perhaps. My money's on the old executive office building. But, uh, you don't take his calls, knowing that every day he will become more and more disillusioned and disappointed. Then frustrated and angry. So angry that he talks. So angry, you hope, that at some point he'll tell all to someone in the press. Someone on the make. Someone like, say, Charlie Loxton, his nephew. You plan to use Carlton not to raise you up to the White House, but to help bring the whole campaign to a standstill. Carlton has also been talking not only to his relative, but to me. And, uh, Tommy Fielder. When Tommy saw the pictures on cable of the Fark gorillas at work in Columbia, he had a change of heart, didn't he? But Tommy was a behind-the-scenes kind of guy who would hate the thought of being dragged into court or before congressional hearings simply to get you out of a tricky situation. You may not have pulled the trigger, but you will be seen as being responsible. Hiding the money in one account or another, schools, hospitals, local community, whatever stopped the roofs from leaking and patching up the roads. The implied pressure from Cotton Hall would, with time, you thought, convince the backers that you were no longer the preferred candidate they had hoped to nurture, and they would be forced to drop you quietly, while all the time you could honestly say to those in private that you had simply reacted to circumstances forced upon you. The death of Tommy forces my hand. The shortest presidential run in history. I'll clear my desk in the morning. No, you won't. Oh? If what you have said is even half true, then it will only be a matter of time before I'm finished. I doubt I will be able to politically survive. Don't be so defeatist, Harrison. Believe me, on the inside I'm smiling. I did not turn up here tonight to save a dying career. It will take more than the kiss of life to save this one. No, 
It will take courage, Harrison. That is why I'm here. 